If you're deploying OpenShift in your data center or in the cloud, you will definitely need a storage. OpenShift Data Foundation, ODF in short, is considered to be a native OpenShift storage. In the upstream community, it's also known as a Rook. ODF is based on leading open source software defined storage called Ceph. Hey, I just taught you a new acronym and two cool sounding words that you can use in your next Scrabble game with your family. Ceph is awesome and so is ODF. It's easy to deploy and use, scales horizontally beyond any business requirements and it's been around for a while so it's way past its growing pains. You can deploy it with the OpenShift cluster or connect to the external Ceph and we're going to cover both of the use cases. But first, let me show you how it works. ODF runs on standard x86 hardware and I like using rack style servers for this software defined storage, mostly due to having more room for local storage. The first two drives are typically used for the operating system, so in our case CoreOS. Then the remaining drives will be managed by the Ceph deployed by ODF. Even though these Ceph managed drives can be spinners for use cases such as the backup stores that don't require high I.O. For the best performance and most of the use cases, you want to use a flash storage and map them with the adequate networking. Your data can be stored in the form of block, object or file and I promise to come back and explain that later. For now, let's dive into how the data distribution works in this solution. The Ceph will break your large data into much smaller chunks and then depending on your replication algorithm, distribute these chunks across its failure domains which for a single server would end up being different physical drives. The default replication algorithm saves your data chunks in three different places. Well, no one in their right mind would just use a single server and expect any reasonable HA for their data. So let's scale out our use case to three ODF servers. Now this makes more sense, since the updated crash map, which is the database describing your drive locations, can expand its failure domains into individual servers, improving the resiliency of your data. And even though three servers would work fine for small environments, one of the biggest advantages of Ceph and ODF is that it can scale beyond any requirements I have ever encountered. So now our three servers can become a three racks, or even at three data centers. But that use case goes beyond of the scope of this introductory video. Okay, let's get back to the types of storage available to you with ODF. There are three, object, block, and file storage. Each type has its sets of trade-offs, and to summarize them, the object is great for unstructured data that don't necessarily need performance. Storing image registry on object store has been very common use case. Block will be the fastest and it's the best fit for databases and your virtual machines. Finally, the file is the one most people are familiar with since that is what we use in our everyday personal computing and it's best to use for collaboration where many users need to access it at the same time. So since now we understand how it works, let me show you how it's installed and we will start with the internal ODF. ODF in OpenShift is handled by the Operator Lifecycle Manager. We will install two operators from the Operator Hub and the first one is the local storage. There's no need to make any changes to defaults, let's just go with the latest stable version. It shouldn't take too long for us to see a green check mark which indicates a successful installation. The second operator is OpenShift Data Foundation itself. And again, we're keeping things default and vanilla. And just like with the local storage operator, let's just wait for the green check mark. Once both operators are installed, we need to drill down to ODF to create a storage system using local devices. Set up local volume set name and specify the nodes and disk to be used for our cluster. I only have three nodes in this lab, which is a minimum to achieve high availability. In my example, my workers also become my storage nodes. Encrypting your data is also very simple, but I'm skipping this step in here and also using default network for my storage traffic. One of the new options of ODF installers is regional disaster recovery, beyond the scope of this video, but let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to cover DR in the future. Finally, let's review and submit. This part of the deployment takes a few minutes depending on your hardware and amount of drives. If you're curious about ODF services and their status, you can monitor the pods in the OpenShift storage namespace. Once the deployment is complete, I like to go to the storage classes to verify they are all there and set up my block storage class RBD to be my default. 
If you have followed along, you should now have a full-fledged enterprise software-defined storage. But what if you don't want to manage your own storage and instead just want to connect to an existing Ceph cluster? Or maybe you have a use case where it just makes sense to manage the lifecycle of your compute independently of your storage. Here are the steps for taking advantage of ODF with external Ceph. The beginning of the deployment process is similar to the internal cluster. ODF can be found in the operator hub. Just follow the defaults for the operator installation and wait for the green checkbox that indicates successful deployment. Then just like with the internal ODF, we need to find an installed operator and create a new storage system. This time, however, we select connect an external platform option. And in the drop down below, let's select Red Hat Ceph Storage. The next screen presents itself with the downloadable script. Let's copy it to the external Ceph cluster of your choice. Before we can execute the downloaded script, however, we need to pre create a pool that will be used for the OpenShift clusters. Your Ceph guy will know what to do, but just in case, here's the example from my lab of the pretty ordinary pool. Now execute the pre downloaded Python script and save the output to the JSON file. This file contains a sensitive authentication data, so make sure to keep it in a safe place. Let's get back to the storage system installation screen to provide the authentication JSON file saved in the previous step. Finally, review and submit your configuration. It will take a few minutes for the cluster to be ready for storage consumption, but there are no more steps to follow. You might have noticed that attaching to external storage is a bit easier than managing your own. Well, it's not. You just have someone else to look after it. One important bit is you cannot have both internal and external cluster managed by a single ODF. Trust me, I have tried it. The question for today is what type of storage do you use with your OpenShift or Kubernetes and why? Let me know in the comments down below. I hope this video has been helpful and thanks for watching.